Every few months, the rules change in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC. This is usually where new Pokemon are allowed to be used, and whenever this happens, there are bound to be meta shifts with different Pokemon either becoming more popular or less popular depending on the meta. Take for example Series 1, where Pokemon such as Sylveon, Goldengo, Armor Rouge, and Garchomp were all pretty common sights on teams. Fast forward now, however, to Regulation C though, and all of these Pokemon are a rarity now. The inclusion of Paradox Pokemon and Treasures of Ruin meant that the meta shifted to a point where now, you'd see things like Fluttermane, Iron Bundle, Chien Power, or Dragonite on most teams. Fluttermane and Iron Bundle have ridiculously high speed stats, way faster than the previously mentioned Pokemon, and they also hit just as hard, if not harder. Meanwhile, Chien Pao's ability, which lowers all of the defenses of the surrounding Pokemon, combined with an extreme speed from Dragonite, can pick up KOs right from the start of battle. So looking at this, it seems like speed is the key right now. But what if you don't have insane speed stats like Fluttermane or Iron Bundle? How is that big oaf Dragonite able to keep up? Well, like I said, it's specifically because of Extreme Speed. Extreme Speed is a priority move, which means that unless the other Pokemon are using moves that have a similar level of priority, or higher, Dragonite with Extreme Speed will move before any other Pokemon regardless of their speed. Now, this must seem pretty strong, right? And it is. Imagine just being able to ignore your opponent's speed and just KO them instantly. Well, there are some drawbacks. Extreme Speed being a normal type move isn't super effective against anything, and also it doesn't affect ghost types. And similarly, other types of priority moves typically have much less base power compared to other non-priority moves of the same type. This is why you often see the Extreme Speed Dragonite paired with a Qian Pao specifically to lower the defenses to allow the Extreme Speed to do decent damage. But what if you could get the best of both worlds? The speed of a priority move with the damage of a regular move? Now that would be scary, wouldn't it? And hey, would you look at that? I've got just the team for you if that's what you're looking to do. The star of the team is Azumarill, whose job is once again, like a previous meme team, going to be to set up for the team with a belly drum, while Flamigo and Sableye act as backup damage dealers, all of which have priority moves. Meanwhile, Chien Pao, Ndidi, and Zora Arc will support the rest of the team. But enough talking about the team, let's see them in action. For the first match, we'll be leading with Azumarill and Ndidi with Sableye and Flamigo in the back. This is going to be the typical lead for most matches actually. You can bring Zoroark in the front for some tomfoolery, or have Qian Pao in the back to help break through the bulkier enemies. Our opponent decides to lead with Roaring Moon and Slitherwing. Now the first thing you'll notice is that Ndidi does not set up a Psychic Field, which is typically what it normally does, and this is because Psychic Field would actually prevent us from using our own priority moves. But this could also be tricking the opponent into thinking that this is a Zoroark, because why would you not have Ndidi with the Psychic Field? So right off the bat, we're going to be using Belly Drum with Azumarill and have Ndidi use Fake Out on the Roaring Moon. It looks like our opponent is going to switch the Slithering out though instantly and bring in a Gyarados, which does lower our attack, but that's not really a concern for us because we're about to raise it right back up to the maximum with the Belly Drum. And he's also going to Thrasolize his Roaring Moon. Ooh, but little does he know, Ndidi is about to clap those cheeks with a Fake Out, preventing it from using what I can only assume was going to be an Earthquake. Meanwhile, Azumarill can max out its attack and recover some HP with a Citrus Berry. After that setup though, now we're in control as Azumarill can use Aqua Jet on Roaring Moon, but unfortunately, Roaring Moon does protect, so it lives for one more turn. Meanwhile, Ndidi can use Follow Me, causing Gyarados' Thunder Wave to be redirected to the Ndidi, which is actually funny because now, Ndidi's real ability, Synchronize, will paralyze the Gyarados too. But unfortunately, the Lumberry does cure the Gyarados instantly. For the next turn, we can essentially go for the same plan, but Roaring Roaring Moon gets switched out for Slitherwing, so after Ndidi uses Follow Me, Azumarill can go Aqua Jet the Slitherwing and almost one it KO it. Honestly, had I terrestrialized Azumarill into a water type, that would have absolutely gotten the one it KO. But hey, hindsight is always 2020. Meanwhile though, Gyarados taunts our Ndidi, so that means it is going to be pretty much useless moving forward. So while Azumarill goes for yet another Aqua Jet to finish up the job, we can switch out Ndidi for Flamigo, who will copy the stats from the Azumarill to get plus 6 attack, thanks to its ability Co-Star. So once Azumarill KOs the Slitherwing with another Aqua Jet, Gyarados paralyzes it with a Thunder Wave. Now normally this would be annoying because your speed is cut in half, but remember, we don't need to worry about speed with this team. There is however the concern for becoming fully paralyzed though, as Roaring Moon comes out once again. With two stacked Pokemon, Azumarill can Aqua Jet the Roaring Moon while Flamigo faints the Gyarados. But once again, hindsight being 2020, since the Roaring Moon protects, having Flamigo use Faint on Roaring Moon would have actually been a bit better since Faint would have hit through the Protect and broken it, allowing Azumarill to land the Aqua Jet and KO. But not all is lost as all Gyarados does is paralyze the Flamigo, which again, we're not too concerned about. So on the following turn, we can simply rinse and repeat. Flamigo does unfortunately get paralyzed, but Azumarill KOs the Roaring Moon 
and Gyarados does get to attack, but it barely does any damage to Flamigo. With the final Pokemon coming out being Goldengo, we have to let Flamigo use Paint again on Gyarados, while Azumarill Aqua Jets Goldengo since Flamigo is locked into the normal type Paint. Thankfully though, Flamigo doesn't get paralyzed this time and takes out the Gyarados, while Azumarill does the exact same and one-shots the Goldengo. And I'll be honest, I don't think that crit mattered, but hey, you'll love to see it anyway. For the next battle, we're going to take the same lead and noticeably they have a Pelipper, so if they set up the rain for us, that'll only help us out since the rain will actually increase the damage of Aqua Jet. And hey, what do you know, lucky us, they lead with Pelipper and Palafin, which sets up the rain. And knowing that there is a possibility of them hard switching the Palafin out, we can have Ndidi fake out the Pelipper while Azumarill does its thing and belly drums. Palafin does indeed switch out and King Gambit takes its place, so as usual this gives us a free setup. Instead of wasting time with Follow Me's, once Azumarill Azumarill is set up, we can have it go for an Aqua Jet onto King Gambit while we bring in Flamigo right away. Although King Gambit does pull out a crazy water terrestrialization, which means that Aqua Jet now becomes not very effective, so it does very little damage compared to what it could do. Meanwhile, Pelipper can get off a Tailwind, but I mean, hey, no matter how much you increase your speed with Tailwind, it won't be good enough against priority moves. The Kato Cleave, meanwhile, from the King Gambit barely scratches the Flamigo. So even though the Water Terror did make King Gambit resist Azumarill's Aqua Jet, it does lose its Steel Typing meaning that our choice banded Flamigo's Faint can now hit it quite hard. So after Flamigo's Faint, with their power combined, the Azumarill and Flamigo is able to take it down. Pelipper, however, does hurricane our Azumarill, and thankfully we do not get confused as Palafin comes out now in its hero form. With Palafin out in the field now and Aqua Jet not being effective against it, Azumarill can now fall into the support role for Flamigo, since we can have it use Helping Hand to boost Flamigo's Faint. So here I actually terrestrialize as well into a flying type to survive a potential hurricane, but once again, Hindsight being 2020, I later go on to change this terror type purely because of this match right here. It was flying initially to boost Brave Birds, but had that been a normal terrestrialization there, Faint would have actually KO'd the Palafin right there. And so because Palafin survived, once Pelipper hurricanes the Azumarill, leaving it with a measly 21 HP, Palafin finishes it off with a wave crash. All is not lost though, because we still have a Sableye to bring in. With how often Pelipper is clicking Hurricane, I have Sableye first tries to disable it while Flamigo finishes off the Palafin. But the opponent switches Amoongus in for Pelipper, this was probably a play to try and reset the rain, because once Flamigo takes out the Pelipper, Palafin can come right back in and reset the rain once the turn ends. So now we're clear to have Flamigo keep on using Faint to chunk down the Pelipper. Meanwhile, Sableye with Prankster can use Skill Swap to get the Co-Star ability, which instantly activates to copy the plus 6 attack boost. Amoongus does put our Flamigo to sleep though, but we still have Sableye at least. Or at least that's what I was going to say, because while Sableye was going to KO the Pelipper with a Shadow Sneak, Amoongus redirects the attack with Rage Powder, tanking the hit, allowing Pelipper to one-shot Sableye with the Hydro Pump, meaning that we have to bring in Ndidi back out onto the field. But with Ndidi coming back fresh onto the field, that means that we can once again have it use Fake Out on the Pelipper to knock it out. And even though Amoongus tries to protect, Flamigo wakes up and hits Amoongus right through it with the feint. And in this 2v1 scenario, there's no way for the Amoongus to win, so our opponent simply forfeits. For our final battle, it looks like we're going up against a sand team, which means that Lycanroc can get pretty fast in the sand. As usual though, we're going to bring the same 4 Pokemon for our team. It looks though that they aren't going to lead with their sand duo, but instead they use Ting Lu and Fluttermane instead. As with the previous matches, we are going to naturally be using Belly Drum with Azumarill, and since Fluttermane is a ghost type, we can have Fake Out on the Ting Lu. Surprisingly though, this Fluttermane has Thunderbolt, which would have been very scary, but thanks to Azumarill having max investment in special defense, and the fact that Ting Lu actually lowered everyone's special attack, including the Flutter main, Azumarill has just enough health to use a belly drum. So we do get quite lucky here, as maybe a follow me would have been a bit uh, better or more ideal in this scenario. But with our Azumarill so low on health, and knowing that an Aqua Jet can KO Flutter main, and indeed he will move before the Ting Lu, we can actually go for a heal pulse here to try and keep Azumarill topped up. But our opponent got spooked by the plus 6 attack Azumarill and double protects with both of his Pokemon. So hey, free heals for us then. But now that we know that they can't go for another protect, Azumarill can target Fluttermane once again and we'll have Ndidi use Follow Me for now because there is a chance that Ting Lu could be using Fissure here and I do not want that to happen. Azumarill does get the KO on Fluttermane and thankfully this is an honorable opponent not using Fissure but instead uses Stomping Tantrum against the Ndidi. Lycanroc comes in as Fluttermane's replacement and we simply can repeat the previous turn, with Ndidi using Follow Me and Azumarill aquajetting the Lycanroc. 
But since Lycanroc does protect, Azumarill doesn't pick up the KO just yet, but instead Ting Lu is the one that gets a KO against Ndidi with another stomping tantrum. This does mean though that Flamigo finally comes in to copy the stats from Azumarill. And since Lycanroc can no longer protect, or at least isn't guaranteed to protect, we can Aqua Jet it yet again. And because of how bulky Ting Lu is, we'll have Flamigo lock itself into a close combat instead of a feint. But before anything can happen, he switches out his Ting Lu and brings in Tyranitar, which sets up the sand. Azumarill does still go first, but Lycanroc lives on 1 HP thanks to its Focus Sash, and gets to bring Azumarill down to the same HP by using Endeavor. Thankfully, because we used Close Combat, Flamigo is able to one-shot the Tyranitar. However, the Sand does end up taking Azumarill down at the end of the turn though. Both down to our final Pokemon, Lycanroc would be very scary because of how fast it is in the Sand, and Flamigo can't use Faint since it's locked into Close Combat, but Sableye's got us covered because it knows Shadow Sneak. Ting Lu also terrestrializes into a Grass-type, making Close Combat no longer super effective, but first, Sableye takes down the Lycanroc without the need of any attack boosts. Meanwhile, next up is Flamigo. And despite doing neutral damage, it still takes out the Ting Lu. Once again though, another crit, which I'm almost certain though that a choice band plus 6 attack Flamigo didn't need that to crit in order to KO, but hey, I'll take the crit anyway. As you can see, once this team does get set up, it steamrolls through most of its opposition. But of course, as with most of these meme strategies, it's exactly that. It's a meme strategy. By no means is it perfect. If Azumarill can't get that turn 1 belly drum, the whole team falls apart essentially. I mean, it almost happened in that last battle. But nevertheless, it's still fun to try out something like this once in a while. So, if you enjoyed this team and want to see more other meme teams, like some of these, please do consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and maybe even watch some of those other fun team showcases. But until next time, bye bye